All right, what's going on, guys? So today we're going to be talking about intramolecular forces and potential energy. So first off, I want to just say intramolecular forces. This means that forces that are going on within a molecule, which means these are forces that are happening between two atoms that are bound together. That's what we're really talking about when I say intramolecular forces. Now, if this were intermolecular forces, let me just kind of, and it was uh, inter er molecular forces, then it, it would be something completely different. We'll talk about that later on uh, in this unit. So this is going to be intramolecular forces between two atoms. The big thing here is looking at a uh, an energy diagram between two atoms and um, what is stable, what is not stable, in particular talking about bond length. What exactly is bond length and bond energy? The big thing that you need to know here is just understanding Coulomb's law. We've talked about Coulomb's law a couple of times. That is essentially the strength of an attraction is going to be dependent on the, the difference in charge. So the more of a charge difference you have, the higher the attraction is going to be. And then the radius, the distance between the two charges. The larger distance between the two charges, less energy it is. The closer they are together, the more uh, energy it is. We'll talk about this in terms of potential energy. This is a diagram that uh, you should be familiar with. This is kind of an intramolecular energy diagram on the y-axis here we're going to have potential energy and on the x-axis here we're going to have the distance of the two atoms so if we have the distance of the two atoms what do we see well we see if they're really close together the potential energy is very very high that means that the they're going to be, start to push each other apart the it's it's not a very stable situation here and that kind of makes sense uh, let me go through and draw here so let's I have a big atom here and I have another big atom here and they get really close together. Their electron clouds are going to be overlapping with one another. And then you're going to get something called electron electron repulsion, where these two electrons clouds are close together. They don't want to be close together because they're both negatively charged. And then this thing gets pushed one way and this thing gets pushed another way. So it's going to spread these guys out. So let's say that we started over here and we uh, started spreading out. And we spread out so far that we get this type of situation. And now we're over here. Okay. Well, now we're in a situation where these guys are actually going to start to be attracted to one another. Remember, we have um, every element has some kind of electronegativity. They're going to try to pull some electrons to it. Even if it's just a slight, slight uh, electronegativity, it's still going to be there. So the positive core of this atom is going to be pulling in electrons. And the electrons that are around are actually the electrons of this atom. So it's going to start to get pulled in this way. In, on the other way, the same thing. So you have a positive core here. It's going to be pulling in on electrons. And these electrons are going to start to get pulled this way as well. So now you have the atoms moving in close together. So now you have the situation where if they're too close together, they're going to be repelled. If they're too far apart, they're going to be attracted. So, uh, and until it gets to a certain point. So down here you see that we have the lowest potential energy. This is going to be your most stable situation. If you can see, this corresponds to some distance between the atoms. The distance between the atoms here, let me just kind of draw two atoms, is going to be your bond length. This is going to be what your bond length actually is. Um, it's going to be you know, the radius of the two atoms plus a little bit extra. If you ever want to know what the bond length of a certain thing is, you need to see what this type of diagram, uh, look at this type of diagram, and you should be able to tell me 
what the bond length actually is. As long as there's numbers on here, there's no numbers on, on this guy. Let's talk about different types of bonds. So we have an ionic bond. Here we have uh, a cation and an anion. These guys are a full charge, a full positive charge and a full negative charge. That means that uh, the charge difference between these guys is going to be quite, quite high. So that means if we go back to Coulomb's law, that the forces, the attractive force here is going to be pretty high. Uh, on top of that, you end up in this type of situation where uh, in the lattice structure here, where these guys are extremely close together. So we have a situation where we have, have the charge difference is high and the there's not a whole lot of distance between the two atoms. So with Coulomb's law, you should be able to tell that 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 energy is gonna be pretty high. And if we look at this chart, sure enough, it is the highest of these three different types of bonds. So that makes sense. Now for covalent bonds, covalent bonds is wherever the atoms are pretty close together. So again, they're, they're not nearly as close as the ionic bonds, but they're still pretty close. Additionally, the, these electrons are being shared across. So you have a situation where if these electrons are over on this side, that means we are going to have a slight negative charge over here because they're hanging out over on this side. And since this is electron deficient, a slight positive charge on this side. Now you have a little bit of a charge difference, which makes that these uh, this coming back. But electrons don't just hang out in one area. They go back and forth. So you're going to end up in a situation where sometimes they're over here and sometimes they're on the other side. If they're on the left-hand side, now this side's negative and this side's positive. So you have a, th a thing where these charges, they're not full charges and the charges are changing a little bit at a time. So uh, that is why the energy for the covalent bonds are not going to be nearly as high as for... Uh, ionic bonds. The charges aren't really there. Remember for Coulomb's law, charge and distance. Last thing for metallic bonds. Here, remember we have a bunch of cations that are kind of in this sea of electrons, these delocalized electrons. Uh, in this case, the, the charge difference doesn't really matter because these guys are always going to have uh, plenty of electrons to, to compensate for that positive charge. The electrons are going to be right there. So there's not going to be a big, huge charge difference. Additionally, the distance between these two cations is going to be pretty high. Um, so these guys are pretty spread out. Uh, and that makes sense because they're both positively charged. Uh, the distance between the electrons and the um, the positive cations is going to be relatively small. So uh, you have a, uh, a not a big charge difference and the distance again kind of really doesn't matter at this point. This is one reason why the energy level is or the energy of the, these bonds are quite low. So three different types of bonds and this is kind of how their uh, bond energies correlate. If you just wanted to, to memorize a fact, ionic is the strongest, covalent, and then metallic. One, two, three. That is one way of going about it. One last thing to think about, and I'm just going to kind of draw this out, and this should be pretty intuitive, um, but what does it look like uh, when you have double bonds or triple bonds? So if I have, so let's say, two uh, elements, it doesn't really matter what they are, H and H and I have a single bond. This is going to have some kind of radius, right? Now, if I have two bonds here, the way you can kind of think about it is now we have an even bigger discrepancy in, uh, in our electrons. If both pairs of these bonding electrons are on this side, that means that the, the charge is even greater, which means that the attractive force between the two are going to be greater. 
which means that the length, the length, the radius of this is going to be much smaller because they're going to have a lot more of an attractive force. The charges are going to be a lot greater. So that brings them closer together. And if we have a triple bond, that's even worse because now if all six of these electrons, all three pairs are end up on one side, we're going to have an even bigger discrepancy in the charges, which means that this radius, uh, the distance between these two atoms is going to be even smaller. Um, the more electrons is kind of the more, more binding you have. All right. So that's it for this video. It's a pretty short one. Um, I will see you guys later. Uh, stay safe out there.